Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCIE Cisco Press author, and in this video, I want to teach you about Auto Smart Ports, a feature available on our Cisco Catalyst switches that has the ability to apply a very robust best practice configuration to a switch port based on the device that we connect into that switch port. Here's what's really happening. We can connect various device types into our Cisco Catalyst switches. Maybe it's a uh, Cisco video surveillance camera or Cisco IP phone, perhaps a wireless access point, or maybe we've got a Cisco router, maybe another Cisco switch. There are a variety of device types that we can recognize when we connect them into a Cisco Catalyst switch. Now, as you might guess, a common way of recognizing a connected device would be to use CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol. And that's one way that this can work. There are other ways. We could use LLDP. We could use 802.1x authentication messages. We could even define our own MAC address group where we specify a vendor code. Maybe we're going to be connecting some HP printers into the switch. And we know the vendor code of these HP printers. We could even go in and say, I want to set up my own MAC address group. Anytime we see a MAC address coming into the switch that has this vendor code, I'm going to think it's an HP switch, and here's how I want to configure that port. So step one of Auto Smart Ports is we connect in a device to a switch with Auto Smart Ports enabled, and based on the device type, a macro gets executed. This macro is going to apply some best practice configuration recommendations to the switch port. So let's say we plug in a Cisco IP phone to a specific switch port. Well, CDP or LLDP is going to tell that switch port, hey, I think we've got a Cisco IP phone attached. And then it's going to run a macro that's associated with Cisco IP phones. And even though in this video we're going to be talking about auto smart ports, I want you to be aware that there's a way of doing this statically. We can do static smart ports. Now, here's the big difference. This smart ports configuration itself is going to save us a ton of configuration. There's a lot of typing that we will not have to do because it enters so many commands for us. And maybe we want to leverage that, but let's say that we know that this block of ports on our switch, they're always going to be used for IP phones, or they're always going to be used to connect to other switches. I don't want them to change dynamically. What I can do is configure static smart ports so once it detects, hey, there's a switch on this port or there's an IP phone in this port and it applies that best practice configuration, then it doesn't change even if I disconnect the phone or if I disconnect the switch. By the way, there's another way of doing this as well. You can uh, configure what's called macro persistence. That means even if the interface goes down and let's say an IP phone was attached, that IP phone configuration on that interface is not removed. So a couple of ways of of keeping this best practice configuration once it's learned by a switch port. We could either use static smart ports or we could use macro persistence. But the focus of this video is on auto smart ports. Now this will allow the interface configuration to change based on a line up or a line down status. Let's say I plug in a Cisco IP phone. Well, it's going to detect that and then it's going to apply a bunch of commands but then later I come along and I disconnect the phone, poof, those commands disappear, they go away. I'll be demonstrating that for you in this video. Something else that I wanna show you in this video is how we can tune an existing macro. For example, we might not be happy with the default VLAN assignment of a macro for voice and data VLANs. I'll show you how to change that. And if we wanna get really creative, we have the ability with smart ports to create our own macros. And that's a lot more involved and not something we're going to be discussing in this video, but you can get into Cisco IOS shell scripting and create your own macros. But in this video, let's just take a look at some of the basics of auto smart ports. And to do that, we're going to go out to a live interface and we're going to connect in a couple of Cisco IP phones and watch this best practice configuration get applied to our switch interfaces. We're sitting here on a Cisco Catalyst 3750 series switch, and before we do any configuration, let's take a look at the existing configuration, if any, applied to a couple of our switch interfaces. We're going to be focused on Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7 and Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 8. Into those ports, I'm going to connect a couple of Cisco IP phones. Let's take a look at our config right now by doing a show run, and I want to jump down to the interface section of the output, so I'll say pipe to begin interface. That'll get us down there a bit quicker. Now check out these two interfaces. Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7 and Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 8. 
As you can see, they have absolutely no non-default configuration. Let's see if we can change that with auto smart ports. First, let's go into global configuration mode and give the one command that turns on auto smart ports on all the different ports on this switch. If you want to take a note on this, it's macro auto global. And just to prove a point, I'm going to give some context sensitive help. As soon as I say processing, notice that this is going to enable auto smart ports on all of our ports by default. So I'm going to say processing and that just turned on the auto smart ports feature for all of our ports. And I mentioned that we had different macros that would apply some best practice configuration recommendations for different types of devices. Let's take a look at what macros are available. I'll bounce out of our config and I'll do a show parser macro and I'll just say brief to begin with just to see the listing. We've got macros for a phone, a switch, a router, and so on. We're going to be focused on the Cisco IP phones. And if I want to drill in and see what's going to happen when I connect in a phone, I can say show parser macro, and then I'll give the name of the macro, Cisco hyphen phone. And you can see that there's a lot it's going to do. It looks like it's going to apply some port security settings. It looks like we're going to be doing some spanning tree things. We're going to be turning on auto QoS, which is going to apply a collection of quality of service best practice recommendations. There's a lot that's going to be happening as soon as it detects that a Cisco IP phone is connected into a port. But notice this macro has a couple of macro keywords. We can specify an access VLAN and a voice VLAN. Here's what's going on if you're not familiar with Cisco IP phones. Many Cisco IP phones have a couple of Ethernet ports in the back of them. One connects the phone into the switch, of course, but the other one allows us to sort of daisy chain a PC into the phone. That way in a cubicle environment, we can still have just a single Ethernet port in the wall and we can daisy chain our PC into the phone and then the phone goes into the port in the wall but we can still have some VLAN separation between the data coming from the PC and the voice coming from the phone by having something called a voice VLAN, containing of course the voice, and an access VLAN containing the data coming from the PC. And we can specify what we want those VLANs to be. Let's see what they are right now, and I'll show you how we can change those. Let's do a show macro, auto device, and we'll use some context sensitive help. These are some of the devices again that we can recognize, and I'll say, phone. And you can see that by default, we've got an access VLAN of one and a voice VLAN of two. Let's say I want to change that. Maybe in my environment, an access VLAN should be 100 and a voice VLAN should be 200. Here's how we can fix that. Let's go back into global configuration mode and I'll say macro auto device phone. And then I'll say my access underscore VLAN I really want that to be 100 and I'll give a space and I want my voice VLAN to be 200 and we enter that. Now let's see if the current parameters have changed. Now look at this. We still see the defaults, but here's what they are currently. This is what's going to be active when we connect in a Cisco IP phone. Now let's see if this works. I'm going to go over to my Cisco Catalyst switch and I'm going to connect in a couple of Cisco IP phones and after a few moments we should see that the interfaces come up and then we execute the macro that applies some best practice recommendations. Before I do that though, let's once again do a show run pipe to begin interface just to confirm that there is no non-default configuration under face to ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7 or face to ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 8. I'm going to go plug those phones in and let's see what happens. All right, the phones have been plugged in. We'll wait for a few moments for them to come up. Looks like face to Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 8 just changed its state to up. We'll give it a few seconds to reach a steady state. Looks like our other interface is up. In a few moments, we should see a macro being applied. Yeah, look at this, it says a trusted device was detected. We're doing some configuration. We're executing Cisco phone event. It even tells us that we're using this auto smart port feature. Give it a few more seconds. And now that we've executed this Cisco phone event on both of our interfaces, let's see what their configuration looks like now. Remember, just a moment ago, 
there was no extra configuration commands underneath those interfaces. Let's take a look now. Wow, this is different. Take a look at Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7. Look at all of those commands. All of those are brand new commands that did not exist just moments ago. Same thing for Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 8. I connected the phones into the switch. And via CDP, the switch said, oh, this is a phone, and because Auto Smart Ports is configured, I'm going to apply some best practice configuration recommendations to those ports. And because we're using Auto Smart Ports, and we're not using Static Smart Ports, and I've not enabled Macro Persistence, then I should be able to disconnect those phones and have the configuration for those interfaces return to normal. So let's try that out. I'm now going to go disconnect those phones. All right, the phones have been disconnected. We got some console messages on the screen. Let's see what our current configuration is. Once again, let's take a look at our show run output and look at this. We have gone in and surgically removed those newly added commands under Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 7 and 1 slash 0 slash 8. That, my friends, is the power of Cisco Auto Smart Ports. It can be a great way to apply some very robust settings. We saw quality of service security, spanning tree protocol, we can apply those settings just by recognizing what's being connected into a switch port.